grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. During my days of chaplaincy at the National Lutheran Home, where I was richly blessed to serve as chaplain, I was blessed also to live in a house that backed up to a farm. The view from the back windows of my house was breathtakingly beautiful. The rolling hills, the rustic farm fences, the red barn in the distance, the trees, the cattle grazing, often right at the fence at the end of my yard, it was truly inspiring. When I moved into that house, I promised myself, I resolved, I would never take that magnificent view for granted. I would stand in awe of it and thank God for it every day. But my days living in that house rolled into weeks and months and then years. Despite my resolve and best intentions, I began not to notice anymore or marvel as much at the, at the picturesque landscape. Many days, my view went unnoticed. Always on the first Sunday in Advent, the focus is the second coming of Jesus. And when Jesus shall return to this world, when his second advent happens, all the world's imperfections, evils, injustices, sufferings, and woes will be no more. All of that wiped away. Then God's kingdom, in all its wonder, glory, and perfection, will fully come. The problem the challenge, of course, is that countless days and weeks and months and years, indeed nearly 2,000 years, have passed since Jesus promised in our reading for today his second coming, his return. It still hasn't happened. And therefore, like me, no longer appreciating my view from my house, we give little, probably no thought at all in our daily living to Christ's second coming. When was the last time you can remember thinking about it? Thinking about the fact that today could be the last day for this world and that the kingdom of God could begin for all the faithful this very day. Indeed, in the next moment. Our thinking goes like this. Since the time of Jesus' coming isn't known, it could be hundreds, thousands, or, or millions of years from now, I don't need to think about it. I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to act upon it. I don't need to prepare for it. But Jesus, in today's reading from St. Mark, a repeat of last Sunday's Gospel, teaches us that since the timing is unknown, it could be today. 
Since the timing is unknown, Jesus is saying we should think about it all the time and be ready for it at any time. Disciples of Christ, people of faith, need to stay awake, be vigilant, and yes, the theme for today, strive to be on the watch, the watch for it, by living our life today as if today just might be the last. So the question becomes, how might my Christian life, your Christian life, be different? If at the beginning of each day, we ask ourselves the question, how would I live my life today? How would I live it differently if I knew with certainty that today is the last one for this world. Might, might reaching out in forgiveness and, and reconciliation to the relative or former friend with whom we're estranged then become imperative? Might we, this very day, mend that relationship? Might we break the bad habit, turn away from the prejudice, write a more generous check to the church or charity? Might we confront the injustice? Might we, might we thank God for the joy of living and, and for the wonderful ride our life has been in spite of its challenges and crises. The list of how differently we would live is a long one. But here's the thing, whatever we would do differently today, if for certain we knew today was the day of Jesus coming again and the last day for this world, we should do that Anyway, we should do that today. That, I believe, is what Jesus is saying with his call to be watchful and vigilant. The parable he tells in today's reading is calling us to be alert now, to stay awake now, to watch now and be busy now, and yes, do the work of God's kingdom now. Let us not put off God's work until tomorrow, work that needs doing today, for tomorrow might not come. That is the testimony of this reading, because today might be the day Christ comes again. Martin Luther said it far better than, I, than I'm able this morning. For when asked what he would do, what he would do if he knew for certain that the world would end tomorrow, he responded, I would plant an apple tree today. This new day before us, this new day God has given to us as a wonderful gift. What a blessing today is. So let's not take today for granted. Let's get busy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.